back, threw it off the line. Just a great start, hooked it all up. Yeah, not too much wheel spin there. You can see the car gripped up and went, and Gronom on his outside, but not able to capitalise. Track being a little bit slippier this morning, then you run into the gravel trap. That was Shider. Look at Shider, 45 degrees to the road. Lost a place to Doran, and then him and Doran went joking straight away. So I was slightly surprised. You could see Batshuska there, the nose was in and then out, wasn't it? Didn't seem to lose too much time. He yeah. then jokered on the next lap, Dan. Yeah, for me, that doesn't make sense. We're watching him through the joke lap now, maybe not quite hooking it up like he did yesterday, and then Scheider able to get up his inside and knock him wide there. So that was a uh, you know, perfectly fair move. Well, I'm in the joker. Doran just behind him, and of course, it was Bakker who went on the last one. That was after Batuska had run into the back of Scheider. I suspect maybe you know, a bit of Archie Bargy there, thanks to the contact uh, at the merge. There it is. Touched him fairly firmly on the exit of that last corner, but this was the merge on the last lap, and Andreas Bakker had edged Nick Klaus Gronon, but the track is getting quicker. So this was Timmer on the outside. It almost sounded like it was going to bog there, but that's kind of perfect RPM. Yeah, just about right. So not having too much wheel spin at all and just hooking traction. You see him rotating the car around the outside and taking a trip through the gravel trap at this point. And then watch Timmy and Toppy. Toppy is uh, up the inside of Timmy. Oh, yeah, he's just in his door, isn't he? Right the way into the gravel. But fair enough, it's like Timmy's on oversteer, Toppy's on understeer. There's not really a lot you can do other than completely lift for Toppy, other than completely lift. Yeah, so once they're connected and making contact, they're both a bit of a, a passenger. And this is Timmy up the inside of uh, Shishrit with uh, that fantastic traction out of the final corner. Timmy Hansen really, really good at getting that Peugeot straight and pulling it through. There's Timmy Hansen running a little bit wide in the background. That will be the mistake that he made to drop a tiny bit of time. Markland takes it, but Baccarat is still fastest at this point. So this was Kevin at the start towards turn one. And it's frustrating. He got a great start, but Balmanis got a mega start. And Sabo, of course, had the line into turn one. Yeah, able to carry that extra momentum from the wider grid slot and uh, just cut across the front of all of them. A little bit sideways, but wasn't even anywhere near the gravel trap. So he had that really under control. Yeah, good run by Sabo. Balmanis uh, looking comfortable again in the car this weekend. I have to say, it sounds awesome. The star machine, he said he's really comfortable in it. Kevin Hansen certainly looking more comfortable in the Peugeot this morning than he was yesterday. Chat with his coach overnight, has that done the trick? Hopefully it has. I mean, we need to see him climb up there if he wants to, you know, reduce the gap deficit in the, in the standings. Yeah, increase it. Hold on to it. Just needs to be in that fight. And play its part, it's may, it may well today. This was for Ashkin at the start, so he comes across the rear. Yeah, it was a bit aggressive. He might get a little word for that, I think. I don't know if it's strong enough for a reprimand, but, it, you know, it's... It wasn't considerate, I guess. You've you got to remember that he's the outside car off of the line and that there's going to be two other cars, and his inside, he can't try and dive for the apex. Maybe there's an element there of the loose surface thing. You know, when you, when you have contact on a loose surface, both cars can move, whereas contact on tarmac isn't quite the same. But either way... That one didn't work out. Parsonen takes it. So this was Bennett on the run to the first corner, getting the jump on uh, Sur Raymond and Herb Napper. We're just looking at the timing screen. So the contact between Toppy and, Toppy and, Timmy. and Timmy is under investigation. Uh, I, do you think they'll say that Toppy could have lifted out of that tank? Because I think they potentially will. I think they could, yeah. But then again, if you're a driver, you're not naturally not going to lift really, are you? No, and like, it's kind of, it's kind of, I don't know, if he put Timmy, I suppose if the wall was near and he put Timmy in it, maybe in trouble, but, um, well, good save by Bennett to not go in the wall. Not quite enough from Sil Raymond. Even start, good launch by all three drivers. Pai went wide here, Dan, but for me, I say just a tiny bit earlier, you know, I, I don't know, I'm maybe being critical, but... Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess from him being so wide out on the track, it did mean he can carry the extra speed. But, uh, yeah, he wasn't quite able to get the, the jump on the other two guys there with him, but able to get one of them. For Ashkin, after Joker's played out, Poye in front, and then Poye hammering in a quick lap. And uh, Derrida managing to hold on, went Joker to protect, and it was close to the merge, but with that shorter run to the inside, Derrida doing a good job to close him off. Finally taking a checkered flag. Well done, Guillaume. Scheider with a great start off the line. Batuska's team, though, again, with good joker lap tactics. Dan, 
Yeah, fantastic. And uh, they were able to pull the gap on Napik with just in one lap to be able to put him in and out before Napik had come around on the standard lap. And this, yeah, the gap in just one lap. That's great, and they, but they needed Shider to be quick there too, didn't they, which helped? Because if, if Shider was quick enough to also gap Napik, but then they went and that gave him just enough clear air, and he gained on Shider, hand over fist, really quick. Bacuska's looking dangerous. Is he quick enough to win the session? We've got three races to go. Through to the semis. On board with Gallan at the start. Gets a good start, little glance left and right. You saw him looking right in the mirror, top of screen. He gets a nudge from behind. Bennett, then he's on his left. I don't think he knew Bennett was there. There's no, there's no intentional malice in that at all. No, the, you could see from his steering angle, he didn't switch direction either way. He, I, think still actually, he's, I think from the previous... I think actually he was touching the back of Toppy and from there his steering must have gone. So he's rele and, Toppy's released him effectively and, and, and then he's ended he's up... fired off to the left and then this is... Bennett going oh. into the wall in the background. He went in quite hard, Ollie, to be fair. There might be a bit of damage to the front of that car. Well, there is a bit of damage. It's how much it is, whether it's superficial or chassis. Toppy, look, this was the contact up at the last, uh, at the hairpin at the far end. You can see it from then on, the, the tyre was rubbing on Toppy's car. So the McGann is absolutely flying around here. They've really done well with that car this year, developing it just the starts, which have let Gillan down this weekend. Find out at the end of this session if it's enough to see him through to the semi-finals at home in France. On board with Timmer. This looked like a great start. You can see just right, there's no one there, but unfortunately, yeah, you see what I mean about them going deep? They've run the car out, haven't they, from the apex? Yeah, both of the guys on the inside actually ended up running the car all the way out to the gravel trap, so no gap for Timmer. You can see they're already two abreast, and for Timmer Zhanov as well, it was just, it was not going to happen unless he give it a massive pull on the bar and just sent it in backwards and pressed on the gas, but there's such a risk doing that. He had to try, didn't he? With a, with a good start, you have to try. If he'd had an average start, the better option is to drop him behind the pack. Doran, I thought, good job with the Joker strategy, because to me, Balmanis uh, and Timmy were getting away from him, but Doran's laps in the Joker on the previous lap must have been great. Yanis is on it at the minute, and Liam Edgeton, clever driving too from Balmanis, really sensible at the merge. Yeah, very sensible. It's not worth getting in a fight now, especially when it comes to, you know, the last race of the qualifying sessions. He's already quite, quite secure in the semi-finals, so wasn't worth trying to run the risk. Yeah, don't give the team a load of work to do ahead of the semis. Timmy Hansen had some work to do. He got it done. Banged in a couple of 35.9s. And that saw him come out with a 229.2. Timmy Hansen leads Q4 with one race to go. On board with Hansen off the line. Into turn one, look, he slots in behind. Oh, it's just... It's a bun fight, isn't it, turn one here? Yeah, it's kind of tuck yourself in and, uh, and uh, hope for the best, I think, in that hold, situation. Hold tight and wait for the hits, isn't it? Almost, and it not, not on purpose, but look at that, there's four or five bits of contact there where you couldn't really go, it's his fault. No, there's no one to blame at this point, and uh, Martin trying to go around the outside, and Andreas, I think, just had the extra grip and got back up, up uh, past him. Yeah, I was sure he was going to hold that line because he was clearly in front, wasn't he, as they came through that turn. Now, Bakker has say maybe, I thought maybe Gronlund was holding him up in the early stages, but later in the race, I had Bakker's tyres have gone up a little bit more. So we know they're all playing a bit of a tyre game coming towards the semi finals. Gronlund going in, Bakker with him, and Bakker here actually was pretty sensible because he's got a reasonable margin at the top of the standings. You know that Kevin is a little way further back. Gronlund took it, but it's Timmy Hansen who won the session. Well, here are the standings at the end of Q4, and Timmy Hansen has taken the top qualifier spot. Rokas Bacuska goes second, and Andreas Bakker drops down to third. So Niklas Gronholm fourth, and it's Toppy Hagen and Timo Scheider, Anton Mark and Liam Doran. Where is Kevin Hansen? Kevin Hansen is in 10th. Balmanis 9th, Kevin Hansen 10th, Sabo 11th, and Timur Timazyanov 12th. And I think that means that the lead of the FIA World Rallycross Championship has changed here in France.